Woof. Today we have a 2007 Toyota Camry with the battery light on. The battery's losing charge, the battery tested fine with the fancy O'Reilly uh, battery checker. So basically I'll run you through putting an alternator on this car. I'll show you a couple steps you can take to diagnose. Obviously this is going to come on if it senses that it's not getting enough charge in the system or something is wrong with the charging system. That means battery, alternator, voltage regulator, which is built into the alternator, etc. So uh, I'll take you through it all right now. Here's a quick at home confirmation that the alternator is not doing anything. You grab your voltmeter, set it at 20 volts, probe terminals positive and negative, and you can see that I'm getting 10.98 volts. Here are all the tools that I'm going to use in this video. I'm going to use a small crescent wrench, a 10 millimeter end wrench, a 14 millimeter end wrench, some larger pliers, some needle nose pliers, some little needle nose pliers, flathead screwdriver, don't forget the voltmeter, funnel, and I used a 3 8 socket for one of the battery terminals, I don't think it's stock, uh, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter short, 14 millimeter deep, 10 millimeter deep, 3 8 ratchet, 3 8 extension, pry bar to get the alternator loose, and I use this rental tool for um, belt tensioning. That made my job much easier. So you can grab that at O'Reilly AutoZone Advance, whoever rents tools. Now we'll remove the engine cover. This one just pops off. Now you have a chance to see kind of a good overview of what we're going for here. The alternator's right here. To get this alternator out, we're going to need to remove this plastic covering here. Now it's nice to get some perspective on what you're doing um, before the job. So you can see the old alternator is, is oriented just like so. It's got a clip here, points towards the front of the car, and it's got this big main power feed here, which is right here. The clip is here. If you look at it, the alternator is actually only held on by two bolts, one and two. This one here is behind that. Yeah, it looks like it's right behind that pulley. So uh, we'll see how we can get it out the easiest way possible without hurting anything and doing it right. Now we're going to remove this plastic bonnet. It has these fasteners in it. Basically what you do with these is put a flathead screwdriver under them, pop them up like this, and they come out. Now you can see we have more working room here. The next obvious thing that needs to come out is going to be the cooling fans. So before the fans can come out, we need to remove this air intake tubing. I'm going to remove two 10 millimeter bolts. There's some vacuum hoses and slots over here. You'll want to pull those out. And then there's a clip here that you will need to squeeze with pliers to pull it out and unclip uh, the sensor. And then this black plastic should come out. This is undone. Here's a look at the back side of that clip for you, for the sensor. All you'll do is just pinch this on both sides so it fits back to that hole. As I take parts off, I'll put the bolts back in the holes so there's no confusion. Beneath this upper plastic intake, there's a lower one too. One 10 millimeter here. And this pops out of the main intake box on the lower side down in here. So when you put it back in, just make sure you slide this in. It's got a, a seal here so it gets more cold air. 
Since we'll be removing hoses, this upper hose has to come up. I'm gonna lower the level of the coolant system. First thing I'll do is I'll open this cap. A little bit of pressure, I started it and moved it. And then there is a drain right there. You'll turn that and it will drain through that hole in the valance below and into a pan that I put down there. Here's a quick tip. I could not get my arm down there and that was a little bit too tight for me to do this finger tight so I grabbed a, a little crescent wrench. I reached a small crescent wrench down there with my left arm, broke it loose, and then I could get it the rest of the way with my fingers and it's about uh, two to three turns counterclockwise to get that uh, drain open. Now I'll disconnect this main wiring harness that goes to the fan and the controllers. We'll need to remove this and it connects to the cooling fans in uh, three places. There's one here, one here, and one here. This clip came pre-broken. Basically you just depress the tab here, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There's the main power to the fans. Now that we've drained enough coolant out, I'm going to remove this top radiator hose with these. There's also a special tool for this which I do not possess. Break that seal, twist, <laughs> and off she comes. I'm just going to jam this hose up and out of the way. The cooling fans are held in with these clips, so you'll pinch and pull out. There are three. You got one, two, and number three over here. I'm going to push this forward so I can see if I can get to this clip at the back and get the rest of this wiring off of here and pull the fans up and out. One, two, three. All right. I'm gonna get my needle nose and see if I can't remove this second clip here. Yep, needle nose, easy. So this final clip is what I need to get out. It looks like I will need to remove the wiring clip on the alternator. Basically, you just pinch on both sides, give it a wiggle, pull. That gives me another inch, inch and a half of clearance. I'll remove the 10 millimeter power cable to the alternator to make more room for the fan shroud. Um, there is the R134A port cover. That is hitting on this fan motor, so I'm going to remove that cover as well. Just and unthread it. Ten millimeter battery hold down. Twelve millimeter holding the dipstick bracket. Maybe be very careful of your radiator fins. Watch for catching on any wires. Just do it slow. Look at where kind of take in everything that's going on. Don't want to snag on wires. Don't want to dent up your radiator. This thing's a booger. I'll lean it forward a little bit and the battery moves out of the way. Make sure I'm not caught up. You just saw me pull this out. Let me go over everything I did to get it out. Main power feed came off. Unclipped the wiring harness from the shroud here. Also unclipped it from here. And here, you pinch the clips at the top. Additionally, you undo the battery hold down. Push this hose 
off and up out of the way, you will need to remove 12 millimeter here so the dipstick can move out of the way and clear the fan motor. You need to unscrew the cap for the low side of the air conditioner. You need to undo this cable that goes to the alternator and then you need to undo the 10 millimeter main power feed to the alternator. And lastly, you need to pull the passenger side radiator hose out of this clip here and kind of shove it out of the way. And then slowly work the radiator up so you're not dinging up the radiator. I mean slowly pull the fans up, watch, make sure they're not touching the radiator very much. Um, I don't see how you can't unless you remove the radiator, which some people do that. Um, but you need to make sure the damage to the radiator is not happening. Fun stuff. That said, now we are clear to start unbolting alternator things. I'm going to remove this wiring loom. There's a 10 millimeter right here, and there is a 10 millimeter right here holding this bracket to the alternator. Now you're going to want to take the belt off of the alternator. There's a tensioner right there. And I'm going to use a belt tensioning tool with a 14 millimeter socket on the end. You can rent this from O'Reilly or wherever. So you just grab on there and push it towards the rear of the car. That will release tension on the belt. You just want to loop it off of the alternator only and keep everything else in place so you don't have a, a bear of a time getting this belt back on because it's not not very user friendly I'll say. So far I have this top bolt out which is this guy right here and now I stink my hand back in and I put a 14 millimeter long socket on this bolt so I'm going to connect to that with a ratchet. So. Hand went down here, right? And I put a socket on the bolt head. And you can see where the socket is. And it's right there. So a reference point for it, it would be like straight below this valve cover bolt. Right there. Now I'll see if I can't get it out that way. Try to reconnect with this tool here. Well, I'm turning the socket by hand now. So I guess I'll just crank on it by hand. I broke it loose once, so this should let me get it out. Oh yeah, I've got a good grip if I use my left arm and shoot it down this way. Now it's turning freely. Now I've got my right arm in and I'm working the bolt. The last bolt to get the alternator off, there is a 12 millimeter bolt straight back. So let's shine some light. There's a bracket back in there. So I put the extension on here already so you can kind of see exactly where it is. If you look back in there, you can see it. It's very hard to show on camera, but grab an extension, grab a 12 millimeter socket, and you can look right back there and put it on there, and then I'm gonna put my ratchet on and pull that out. So I've unbundled the bracket to the back of the alternator, and now it appears that this wiring harness has uh, this wire connected to that bracket. So before I try to yank this alternator out, I'm going to just disconnect this bracket 
from the back of the alternator as well so the bracket will stay in here and then I can disconnect the wiring safely from it without giving it a really hard tug. So really make sure you do this because I think that's a knock sensor or something very important. I don't remember but I'll show you where that bolts. Here's the alternator. Front of the car here. That bracket that I'm about to unbolt is a 14 millimeter bolt that fits right in here. So I'm going to unbolt that now. Now this should come out without a fight. Alright, here's the bracket that stayed in the car. So I have the two bolts, 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and it's it's just got the typical clamp to this wire right here. So you need to squeeze it with needle nose pliers to detach it. And then I'm gonna bolt this onto the new alternator. Prepare that new alternator for our installation. First thing we're gonna do is bolt this bracket back on. Here's where the clip that could get yanked really hard, that's where that guy clipped in. So put your bolts back in. Here's the hole where it's going back in. You can see the AC compressor here. This clip here, um, I never really got close to hitting it. I would have removed it if I were near it, but it was pretty clear. Here's the wire that went back. I'm gonna go ahead and install the alternator. I'll need this bracket to kind of snake in, so I'll kind of push it in and turn it clockwise like this. Careful the radiator. So now the alternator is a little left of where it should be. That's when I'll reach back and reconnect the little wire that was causing me some extra work. So I'm going to reach back in there, clip it up into that bracket. Alternator is easy to align. I'll get this top bolt in. Gonna push, push this radiator hose out of the way. Go. Now I'm gonna reach around the back and get this back second alternator bolt in. Getting the back alternator bolt threaded was kind of a pain in the rump um, with this pipe in the way, so I do see why people remove the pipe. It's completely valid. However, um, I did find that once I, I tried something different, so now you don't have to figure it out. <clears throat> um, I went ahead and put the bracket bolt in back here. I just put it in loosely, just so it would guide the hole on the left side um, close to the right spot. I just put this bolt in loose on the top just to kind of hold position and then I put my right arm down here and my left hand supported this so I can move it just a little bit back and forth until I found the hole and then I finger tightened the back bolt. Now we're ready to rock and roll. Here's a quick tip for getting the back alternator bracket bolt in. You'll just grab your socket, put a piece of tape over the end of it, and then jam the bolt into that, and then it won't fall off. You can just put it right back in there. To tighten the back bolt, I used a long 14 millimeter with the belt tensioning tool. I got it finger tight first, so I just needed a few cranks. Easiest way is to pull this off every turn rotate it a little bit and put it back on. I will try to retension the belt now. Looks like it stayed in place which is great because this thing looks terrible to redo. It's time to put the radiator fans back in. Now remember this is a great time to close your radiator drain. It's really easy to access right now so that's closed and this is going to slide in and snap in. I'm going to go ahead and unplug these two 
so they don't get in the way. Don't want to damage older plastic. Lock them all in. Now I'm plugging in my fan motors. And I'm reconnecting the clips over here to hook up the fan power to the rest of the car. Just shove those clips back into place where they're supposed to be. A couple of them may break. I broke two out of three just because they're nasty old plastic. I'm gonna run a zip tie around here. And yeah, I'm gonna run this zip tie here just to make sure that this clip, the clip kinda stays and kinda doesn't. I wanna make sure this wiring doesn't get into the fan here. I'm gonna connect the con connectors to the alternator. Click, and then I'll put the rubber over it so stuff does not get in there. The main power feed in a 10 millimeter. And then grab the port cover, the cap for your R134. Connection, good. Then reconnect your dipstick to the cylinder head here. Now the 10 millimeter bolt for this main wiring harness. This one goes in the valve cover. You want to reconnect this wiring harness to the front of the alternator with this small 10 millimeter bolt as well. Mm -hmm. Right here. Yeah. Now I'll reconnect the radiator hose. Reconnect the battery hold down. I'm going to put this lower air intake hose back in. Kind of snakes under the battery here. And then you can look through a crack up here and see where it's supposed to go. And bolt it down. Now remember this piece right here is where this little wiring harness clips to. I'll grab the big plastic piece and just pop in the fasteners. All right, now I'm gonna refill the radiator. All right, now I'm gonna reconnect the battery and fire up the car to get the system burped. Get the water pump working, workout bubbles. Dad, what was that sparking? Now that we're running, we see we're running 13.27 volts. The alternator is now working. You're 
all done. See, 